This is the day that the Lord hath made. And I will rejoice. We will rejoice. We will rejoice. We will renew our joy and be glad in what God has made. Whatever God does is good. Whatever God does is right. Whatever God does, it's blessed. So this is the day that the Lord has made. So it's good. It's right. Today is blessed. And therefore, we will renew our joy and we will participate in what God is doing by saying amen. Amen means it is so. Amen means that my soul, my mind, my body, I am in agreement with God. And whatever God does, I want to be a part of it. I'm Bishop Marcus A. Johnson Sr. And I'm your host today on the New Harvest Midday Inspirational Meal Time. I am ecstatic when I consider the fact that God is in control of everything. Every concern, every issue, every problem, every burden, God is in control of it. And so if I stop acting like I'm in control and let allow God to be in control, then I take all of that stress off of my back. I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. He is in full control. And God is not just in full control, God is all-knowing. So God knows exactly what's happening. God knows exactly what needs to be done. And God knows how to do it. And so we bless and praise God for relationships. Come on now. We bless and praise God for our finances. Come on. We bless and we praise God for our health. Come on, come on. If we got decisions to make, we praise God because he is our all in all. He's got it. God's got it. And we're so thankful. Let's ask God's blessings upon this discussion that we will share today. Father, we bless you for being Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. We bless you for being the great I am. We bless you for being our all in all. We bless you for your authority, your omnipotence, your omniscience, and your omnipresence. We bless you, God, that you are from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. Now breathe upon us this afternoon. We are weak, but thou art strong. Guide us, O oh, thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land, thou I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold us with thy powerful hand, bread of heaven. Feed us till we want no more. And we will give you the glory and the honor for ruling and reigning under the anointing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Those of you that are on board, you're serious about your salvation. Those of you that are on board, you have prioritized God in your life. And in this pandemic, I want to prophesy that you are blessed above and beyond measure. I want you to know that. I want you to know that God has already purposed not only what he's going to do for you, but how he's going to bring you out how he's going to bring you through. You need to know that right now, that God has already thought concerning the thoughts concerning you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to bring you to a blessed destination because of your commitment, because of your obedience, because of your submission. I want you to know that God has already predetermined how he's going to favor you. And I want to quote the scripture. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the thing that God has in store for those that love him, those that love God, fear God, and they will follow after him. So just know you are on your way to being richly blessed by 
God. And so today is Saturday. We are looking at the theme, reigning under the anointing. Wherever you're ruling, you're ruling by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you're ruling, you're ruling by heaven's endorsement. And with the revelation of Christ's ministry of grace, with Jesus Christ letting us know who he is, and he is superior to all things. Based upon that, we will now address question and answer. But let's just recall a couple of Saturdays ago, we looked at handling Sunday scaries. We said Sunday scaries are those apprehensions that some feel on Sunday, knowing that Monday is coming and anticipating the week coming up. And we made four points about that. We used David in the scripture and said, David repented when shouldering the weight of shame and guilt, because that's what made his looking forward difficult and scary to him. So he repented unto God and the Lord restored him to him, the joy of his salvation. We looked at Job and we saw Job also repented for accusing God. And as a result, the Lord restored him and he prayed for his accusers. We looked at Elijah the prophet and, he's, and we saw that Elijah was not the only one serving God. That's why he had Sunday scaries because he felt like everything before him, he was the only one all by himself. And when he recognized that God had others, it he then began to prepare Elisha for others to succeed him. Jonah, Jonah, wow. Well, he had Sunday scaries. Why? Because he didn't think that the people in Nineveh deserved to be restored by God. But when God finished dealing with him, Jonah had compassion for others, just like we need for ourselves. So we can face the next week because we are getting ourselves properly aligned with God. Then we, another Saturday, we looked at let's labor to rest. Let's labor to rest, coming from Hebrews 4, verses 6 to 11. And we also looked at four points. Laboring to rest, why? Because a place of rest still exists. God does not want us worn out. God does not want us beat up. God does not want us collapsing out of exhaustion. That's not God's plan for our lives. That is not to say that we won't encounter some rough spots, but God wants us to rest in him. That means to rely upon him completely, to know that the work of God is total. So therefore, I can rest in God. L let's labor to rest by responding to God's invitation to enter into his rest. So in the middle of a horrendous situation, God is saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will what? I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart and you shall find rest for your souls. So God wants us yoked to him. He will carry the weight of it and where he goes, we will follow. Three, let's labor the rest by enjoying the results of all Christ has accomplished for us. We used to sing a song, Christ is all in all the world to me. When we recognize that everything we could need from earth to glory, Christ has already accomplished. Not going to, the going to is the manifestation. But Christ has already done what needs to be done so that I can do what I'm supposed to do. And I can rest knowing that the work of God has gone before me. Number four, let's labor the rest by believing and applying our faith in God. 
taking the burden off of our shoulders and placing them on God. Why? Because he can handle it. He can carry it. Now, that's just to get us set for our question for today. And so we can face tomorrow without fear, without depression, without anxiety, as we apply our faith to enter the abiding rest of God, to enter in. Now, let's look at our question for today. Good morning, Bishop. I am a YouTube listener and a long time New Harvest member. Well, I won't say who they are. They go on to say, I'm a bit embarrassed to ask a question about faith, mainly because we're supposed to have faith, use our faith, and be confident in our faith. So the person is already giving themselves the answers that they need. But let's go on. But I want to know if having faith means that I am 100% sure that God will move with no doubts, or is having faith being less sure? Let me read that again. But I want to know if having faith means that I am 100% sure that God will move with no doubts, or is having faith being less sure? In life, I can definitely say I have wondered. And then they quote from 1 Samuel 14 and 6, perhaps God will be with us. And I've questioned, and they're quoting from Matthew 14, 28, Lord, if it really be you, then please tell me what to do. Please bid me come. I trust you with this question because you always keep it real. Thank you so much. I think that's the only way to do it. And it's signed, Now Faith Is. <laughs> We got some talented people among us. Some talented people. Sign, now faith is. Okay, so question and answer. But I want to know if having faith means that I'm 100% sure that God will move with no doubts or is having faith being less sure? Let's, let's get into this. Let's get into this. Let me first say that we are spirit, soul, and body. We are spirit, soul, and body. So let's be clear about something. And Sydney, you can do your best to doctor this up because I didn't write this out. But, 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 but listen to this. We need to know where our faith is to be positioned. Is it important that our faith is in our body? Is it important that our faith is in our soul? Is it important that our faith is in our spirit? Let me suggest that our faith must spring from our spirits and it must connect with our soul. Our faith must be in our spirit because we are spirits first with a loan of a body. But we will forever be spirit and soul. We will forever be spirit and soul. That's the immaterial part of our being. The body will collapse like a tent. But when Jesus Christ comes, then we will receive a glorified body. But right now, I'm less concerned about the faith being in the body. I want it to be in our spirit and I want it to connect in our soul. That means that part of me that is most in fellowship with God, my spirit that has been justified by God, that's where my faith needs to be because I only got saved by faith. And therefore, I must link it with my soul, with my will, with my desire. I must link it with my, with my, uh, my thoughts. And so out of my spirit, I link my faith with my soul. The body is going to resist. Understand the body is going to resist. And a lot of times when we say 
I'm struggling with faith, what we're really saying is that I am depending upon what I feel in my body and I'm letting my body then determine what's going on in my soul. But that's the wrong order to do it. Faith must start in my spirit. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him what? In spirit and in truth. So if my faith is anchored in my spirit, then it will link with my thoughts. It will link with my will. It will link with my desire. And then I can stand up and then I can say the words of the song on Christ, the solid rock I stand. The rock is solid. All of the ground is sinking sand. Now the body is not going to offer that, but the spirit will. And then the soul can say amen and be in agreement with God that my faith that springs out of my spirit links with my soul. It links with my soul. Now, that being said, let's go a little further into the lesson. In life, I can definitely say I've wondered, perhaps God will be with us. And then they quoted from Peter. And Peter answered him and said, this is when Peter stepped out of the boat, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Okay, so let, 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 let's, let's dig into this. I'm entitling this lesson today, What is Faith? Excellent, Sydney. Excellent, Sydney. You're grabbing it. You're grabbing it. You're grabbing it. Okay, that's right, Phil. Put your body on notice that my spirit is Christ's temple and that the spirit has got to lead. The soul will follow, and then the spirit and the soul then bring the body under subjection. Paul says, I buffet my body, and I bring it under subjection, because the body's not going to want to cooperate with faith. Oh, no, it's not going to want to do that. So you don't give the body a voting right. You command your body as for me and my house, my body, we will serve the Lord. You need to say that. For As for me and my house, as for me and my body, guess what? We're going to have faith in God. So let's first define faith by determining what faith is not. What faith is not. Point number one. Point number one. Faith is not applied uncertainty with God. Faith is not applied uncertainty with God. Faith does not start with uncertainty. Faith has to start with certainty. Let's, let's look at this. Uncertainty denies confidence, but considers chance, gambling, possibility, prospect, probability, coincidence, and accidental occurrences. If I am approaching God with a lack of confidence, if I'm approaching God as with chance, if I'm gambling, I'm praying, but I'm a gamble. I'm going to try and see if it's going to work. If I'm saying God is out of a possibility, maybe it's a prospect, it's a probability, it's a coincidence, it's an accidental occurrence. None of that is faith. None of that is faith because all of that is uncertainty. So faith is not applied uncertainty with God. When we pray, we must pray from a position of certainty. Point number two, faith is not commingled with doubt concerning God. So I can't have faith and then mix doubt with faith. No, you can't mix them together and think you're going to have faith. It's something else. Faith is not commingled with doubt concerning God. Why? Because doubt denies confidence and conviction, but it accommodates fear. Did you hear that? Doubt denies confidence in God. It denies conviction in God, but but doubt accommodates fear. 
And we know fear is not of God because fear brings torment. So what is faith? Well, we said faith is not applied uncertainty with God. That was point number one. Point number two, faith is not commingled with doubt concerning God. So what is faith? Faith is intentional, determined conviction. Let me stop right there. I'm not finished. Faith is intentional. I don't just stroll upon it. No, I am I, I am purposeful about it. Faith is intentional, determined conviction. That means down in my guts, in my spirit, there's a yes for God. It's intentional, determined conviction. What? That God is the sovereign. I am that I am. That's what faith. Oh, we used to sing a song. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. It's intentional, determined conviction that God is the sovereign I am that I am. It's a settled deal. That's what faith is. Faith is all about God being the sovereign I am that I am. In Exodus chapter 3, verses 10 through 16. And now the Lord is speaking to Moses. Come now, therefore. And I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. God is speaking directly to Moses. And Moses said unto God, who am I? Oh, wow. So faith must always consider who I am. Okay? And I know that I'm needy. I know that I'm incomplete. I know that without God, I can't do anything. And Moses said unto God, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? So Moses was certainly doubting himself. And he said, the Lord said to Moses, certainly I will be with thee. Did you hear that? God said, certainly, certainly. I will be with thee. Faith comes from God. He gives it to us. We can't manufacture it. We can't put it together. God gives us faith. He says, certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Now, if God operates from a position of certainty, then that means we can receive his word as a promise. We can receive what God has said. It's a done deal. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, they're going to ask me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Listen to God. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. God said, moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob have sent me unto you. And then he says, this is my name forever. That means God will always be I am that I am. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob appeared unto me saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. So what's the point? Point number three, get this now. Faith is confidence and knowing who God is. Before we say, I have faith that God's going to do this, let's start with who God is. Faith is confidence in knowing who God is. It's got to start there in our spirit and link with our soul. Faith is confidence in knowing who God is. But let's not confuse knowing who God is with knowing how he will move. 
And sometimes we're more concerned with how God's going to do it until we're trying to make that be faith. No, faith is confidence in knowing who God is. Point number four. Faith is confidence in knowing who God is, believing his word while trusting his how. I'm going to repeat that. Faith is confidence in knowing who God is. Who is he? He is the I am that I am. It's believing his word. What is his word? The Bible. The scriptures is believing his word while trusting his how. God's how speaks of God's timing. It speaks of God's method. It also speaks of God's where, where he will do what his word declares. All of that is on God. That's not on me. Okay, God, I believe that you are I am that I am. And so I, I have faith that you are the I am that I am. I believe every word that you say. Therefore, I will trust your how. I will trust how you move in timing. I will trust the method that you use to do what you're going to do. And I'm going to trust the location where you're going to do it. We often struggle because we try to make faith, belief, and trust all the same. And so we're really trying to have faith beyond what we know. Come on, we better know his word and believe it. Then we better trust God. He knows what he's doing. Faith is knowing who God, knowing God is who he says he is. I am that I am. That's what faith is. Faith is knowing God is who he says he is. I am that I am. No matter what we're dealing with, God is the I am that I am. No matter what's happening to you right now, no matter what you're dealing with, you say, but I've been through this over and over and over again. Well, my God hasn't changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the creator of all things. He's the sustainer of all things. Faith is knowing God is who he says he is. Belief, hear this, is the conviction that his word is the eternal truth. What does that mean? If I am convicted that God's word is the eternal truth, then that means whether it happens Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, this month, next month, this year, next year, belief is that his word is eternal. His word is true before it even manifests. And remember, the, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. So God's word is eternal. It has no beginning and no end. It doesn't become true when it happens in time. It's already true before time. But trust is total confidence in God's providential how. And sometimes God won't tell us how he's going to do what he's going to do told the disciples, meet me on the other side. He didn't tell them there was going to be a storm. He didn't tell them how they were going to get through it. He just said, meet me on the other side. So believe his word. Believe his word. We're going to get to the other side. However, however God chooses to move, I trust him in doing the right thing at the right time, at the right place for his righteous reason. Trust is placing no restrictions and no strings on how God moves. The moment we start putting restrictions on God, that's not faith, that's not belief, and that's not trust. But once we have faith in knowing who God is, we're convicted with our belief that his word is eternal truth, and we trust with total confidence in how God will work it out, then I can hope. And my hope is divine expectation that rests upon faith, belief, and trusting in God. Hope is divine expectation resting upon 
faith, belief, and trusting in God. Let me, let me, let me do this real quick and then I'm going to shut it down. I pray this is helping somebody. When Jonathan in 1 Samuel 14 and 6 said, perhaps God will be with us. Let's put this in context. He was not, Jonathan was not doubting God. No, no. He was awaiting God's confirmation for his will in that situation. At that point, he wasn't sure what God's will was in that situation for him. That's why he said, perhaps God will be with us, that God will move this way. So Jonathan traveled with Ahia, the priest. He was a descendant of the prophet Eli, the priest Eli. So Jonathan traveled with Ahia, the priest, who was wearing an ephod that would determine and confirm for Jonathan what the Lord's will was in that situation. So when Jonathan said, perhaps God will be with us, meaning perhaps God will move this way if this is his will. He was waiting to find out God. And sometimes we don't know what his will is. So that's when we do what? Stand still and see the salvation of God. So once Jonathan had the confirmation, he applied faith in who God is, believing exactly what God's word declared, therefore trusting how God was going to work it out and God was going to give him the victory. Whereas Peter, when stepping out of the boat, was totally reliant upon his faith in knowing who Jesus was from prior circumstances. Jesus had done many miracles. And certainly when they were on the boat before this incident and Jesus was asleep on the boat, then when Jesus got up and he rebuked the wind and said, peace be still, well, Peter remembered that. So therefore, Peter knew who God was. He is the I am that I am. He is the master of the wind and ocean. So that's why he said, if it's you, then you tell me to come and I will come. And Jesus said, come. So Peter stepped out of the boat on the very solid rock of knowing who Jesus is. So here's the answer. Here's the answer and I'm done. Having faith is 100% confidence in knowing who God is. It's 100% confidence in believing his word. It's 100% confidence in trusting how God will move. Therefore, it's 100% confidence in having hope that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. So here's our takeaway for today. Ours is not so much having the answer, but knowing the answer Jesus has us. So we don't, don't worry about having all the answers. Just know that the answer has us in every situation. And the Bible declares in Isaiah, no weapon formed against us will prosper. And any tongue that rises up against us in judgment will despise it. For this is the heritage of those that seek thee, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Listen, get it. Get it in your system. Let faith be in your spirit. Let it link with your soul and let it command your body that I am totally operating with 100% faith in God. I hope this helped. I hope this helped. You may want to listen to it again. Please live chat. Let me know if this has helped in any way. If you have any other questions, you can pose it in the chat and I'll look at it and, and I'll address it next time. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have gifted us with faith. But God, I've been up this hill before. I've dealt with this before. But God said, I'm still, I am that I am. But Lord, your word said that 
all things work together for good. Is it going to work together for my good? I believe what you say. But Lord, are you going to do something right now? Am I going to see something happening now? Is it going to be later? When? I'm trusting God's timing, his how. God knows what he's doing. And when he brings me out, we shall come forth as pure gold. I bless you, God, for blessed relationships, healed miracles and relationships because of faith in God. I bless you, God, for healed finances. I bless you for the miracle of healed finances. I bless you, God, for healed bodies. I bless you for touching our bodies and that we will operate by grace, the favor of God. Bring us, oh God, to our expected destination. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Please tell. Thank you, Dr. Kayenda Johnson. Great lesson. Thank you for that. I, I want you to know I, everything I own, I put it into this. My wife gives me full freedom to do that. My mom prays for me that I can do this so that when we come out of this pandemic, we're, I'm not coming out the way I went in. I'm not coming out of this pandemic limping and coming out of this pandemic halfway knowing if God is going to do. I'm not coming out of this pandemic not knowing what which way to go. I'm coming out of this pandemic. My heart is fixed and my mind is made up. I have decided to follow Jesus and I will trust him all the day. Let me just say this real quick and I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. When I was paralyzed in the hospital, when I felt nothing from my waist down, the Lord spoke to me that morning in the hospital and said, Marcus, today preach your first sermon in Johns Hopkins. And I'm like, whoa, preach my first sermon? How do I'm going to preach? Preach to who? Preach where? See, we get stuck because we try to answer all the things that God will show us when he's ready for us to know it. And so God didn't answer me. He just told me what to do. And I hear God saying right now, follow me, obey me, do it my way. Stop trying to figure all the pieces out. And then here comes the nurse saying, Mr. Johnson, the doctor wants to see all the patients in the pain clinic program in the conference room one at a time. God had set it up. I was going to preach to the medical staff. And so I was the last patient to go in. And when I got in there, God told me to open my mouth, but I had to have faith in who he was. I was still unable to walk. But you don't wait until the miracle manifests. Faith says I can speak it before I see it. I can speak it before I hear it. I can speak it before I feel it. Because faith is not based on feelings. Faith is based on conviction in the spirit that links with the soul. And so I told them, not only was I not going to die, they saw how bad off I was and my blood pressure was out of control and they wanted to know how you managing your pain, how you're doing this. They were kind of checking me out. But God said, tell them, not only am I not going to die, but before your eyes, you're going to see me walk. And these were the doctors that knew why I wasn't walking. And they said, how do you know that? And I said, you know what? I was a ship that was tormented at sea, but I had water in the ship. So I took the ship and put it on dry ground. God said a ship was never intended to be on dry ground. Put your ship back in the water, but get the water out of your ship and start sailing. And I said to them, you have a great day because I already am. That's what I said. And I took my wheelchair and swung it around and rolled out of there and went to my room and I said, well, God, you said preach my first sermon. And so I've done it. I did it by faith and knowing who God is. And then they took us to physical therapy. And while I was in physical therapy, two hours later, God said, Marcus, you did what I said. It's time to walk. Didn't have a clue. He didn't say, it's time to walk. Now you're going to do that. I said, well, how am I going to do that? He said, let the nurse take you to the parallel bars. That's how you're going to walk. And I believe God did that so the nurse would be directly involved and would be aware of what God was doing. So I went over, she 
she put me in the chair and I wheeled myself. Oh, she wheeled me over to the parallel bars. When I got there, I said, back up, back up. I'm getting ready to walk. Good God from Zion. I want to tell somebody in your relationship, you're getting ready to walk. I want to tell somebody in your finances, you're getting ready to walk. I want to tell somebody in your health, you're getting ready to walk. I want to tell somebody in your ministry, you're getting ready to walk. Then I said, God, you said it. I spoke it. I agreed with you. Now let me get up and walk. I can't do this on my own. I can't make this happen. But you have been God before my mother met my father. You were God. And if anybody can make me walk, you can. Lord, when I count the three, let me walk. That was faith, the gift of faith that was operating in me. And then I spoke it out loud. And I announced to all those patients, to the nurse, when I count to three, I'm going to get up and walk. And I wasn't questioning because I knew who God was. But God was leading me now. This was now God leading me in the timing, the how. I counted to three out loud. And when I got to three, so help me, I felt fire in the ankles of my feet. How are you going to feel fire and you're paralyzed? Well, if God said it, then that settles it. And then the fire, I can feel it going up my legs. And when it got in my hip, I grabbed those parallel bars because faith without works is dead. So you got to start acting like you believe it. I grabbed those parallel bars and so help me, God, I stood up. I was like, Peter, Lord, if it be you, bid me come. And I started walking and it hurt. I want you to know faith sometimes hurts. I want you to know there's pain in faith, but all oh, the ultimate destiny is blessed. And as I walked and witnesses saw me walking, don't you know God wants somebody that knows your struggle, somebody that knows your pain? They, God wants them to see you walking. God wants to see you thriving in their presence so they can believe. And I'm here to tell you, I walked and I came back and fell in that wheelchair. And the nurse said, let me get the doctor. I said, I'm going to do it again. Faith means you got to repeat it. You got to do it again. Don't just do it one time. And when I walked that second time, so help me, I felt like I could dance right in Johns Hopkins Hospital. Why? Because I believed I had faith in who God was. I believe what he said, and I trusted his how. Good God. And as a result of that, I just less than a week later walked out of the hospital carrying my own luggage. They wheeled me in. I walked out. I'm here to tell you right now, let this be a weekend of your walking. God bless you. I didn't mean to go this long. Woo, but this question got me worked up. What is faith? Is knowing that God is the I am that I am. There's nothing too hard for God because of who he is. And so I believe if God says one word, if God says 20 words, I believe all of it because the word is God. And then I trust God, whether he does it in the back room, whether he does it on stage, whether he does it out in the marketplace. I'll just trust God where, when. And then, ha, my hope is that God will do just what he said. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Please listen to this again. Hit that like button if this has blessed you in any way. And give God something impossible that you can trust him. That he's going to work it out. Be blessed. And I'll see you tomorrow for our Biblical Academy 930. We'll see you at 11 o'clock for our morning worship. I will be in the sanctuary tomorrow with the saints. If you can get out, come on out. Come on out. And let's enjoy Jesus. Let's come tomorrow and have a faith fest. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Praise God.